Police were not fully prepared for the scene from hell they encountered on March 1st, 2000, when they arrived at John Price's house in the serene Hunter Valley village of Aberdeen. A human head was cooking with veggies in a saucepan on the kitchen stove. What looked like steaks were served with vegetables on a plate at the kitchen table. There was a human body in the living room that had been expertly skinned. A meat hook on the architrave was holding the victim's skin, which was on display. The intensity of the attack made it difficult to estimate the number of wounds. Many of them were deep. Vital organs like the aorta, liver, kidneys, and lungs were affected, and the blood loss was massive. Police identified the human remains as of a 44-year-old homeowner, John Price. The murder took place late on February 29th, 2000. On March 1st, a co-worker went to check on John Price after he failed to show up for work. The co-worker contacted the police when he noticed blood on the door. When police arrived at the residence around 8 a.m., they saw a 1 by 2 meter pool of blood in the hallway. There were bloodstains and spatter all over the house. Investigators concluded the first injuries were inflicted in the master bedroom based on evidence found at the crime scene. He made an attempt to escape by making his way down the hall and toward the entrance. His attacker followed him and repeatedly stabbed him in the back. After a brief moment of hope, he was carried back into the corridor where he eventually died. John's headless body was discovered by the police in the living room. A butcher's knife used in the murder was found next to the victim. According to the forensic report, his body was dragged there and later he was skinned and beheaded. As the police made their way through the scene, it felt like the beginning of a journey into hell. They discovered John's head inside the kitchen. The sickening stew was still at 40 to 50 degrees C. There were gruesome steaks from John's cheeks that had been roasted in the oven with veggies on the kitchen table. The responding officers will never forget the scene they witnessed. Catherine Knight, an employee at a slaughterhouse, was the lone suspect. She was found by the police inside the home, apparently drugged up beyond recognition. For over four years, Catherine Knight and John Price had been in an apathetic relationship. The marriage was in tatters at the time of the murder. She showed her full hatred for John by killing him. The pair had a furious argument on Sunday, February 27th, which was just two days before her fatal attack. John ran away and sought protection from a close friend. He said that Knight had threatened him with a butcher's knife. Knight and John were both interrogated by the police, but the matter remained unsolved due to their conflicting statements. John requested an AVO against Knight at the Scone Court Chamber Magistrate on the morning of his last day of life. When she came to know about this, she decided to end all her problems by killing her husband. She left her two younger children in the care of her older daughter. John Price was killed with careful planning and thought. The act was carried out with considerable skill and an obviously steady hand so that his skin, face, ears, neck, torso, and legs were removed in order to create a pelt. This was accomplished with such precision that during the post-mortem examination, the skin was able to be re-sewed onto John's body in a way that showed a clear process. Knight was arrested the following day after the murder. When questioned on March 4th, she claimed she couldn't recall any murders. She told a lie, but the psychiatrists who examined her didn't buy her story. The judge said, quote, The only suitable sentence for the prisoner is life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Catherine Mary Knight became the first Australian murder woman in the country's history to be sentenced to life imprisonment without parole.